partners, step one. In working with partners of sex addicts and partners of intimacy and anorexics, you know, we have 12-step workbooks, Beyond Love for the Partners of Addicts, Married and Alone Step Book for those who've experienced intimacy and anorexia. I find it really critical that a partner goes through step one. Now, the steps have been around for over, you know, uh, 50 years or longer, and they've helped so many people in so many different ways, alcohol, drug addiction, you know, codependency, overeating, you name it. And as a partner, sometimes I say, well, why do I have to do the steps? I didn't do anything wrong. Well, if you've lived with an addict, you have definitely incurred some pain, some trauma, some experiences, and how to walk through that. Step one helps you be in a process to move through your recovery. And your recovery, if you've been hit by a car, you have to recover, even if you weren't driving the car, even if it wasn't your fault, you still have damage. And you have damage in every area of your life, spiritually, emotionally, sexually, financially, um, even neurologically. The trauma of sex addiction and intimacy, intimacy and anorexia are huge. And you can embrace the process or you can fight it, but those who embrace it do better. I mean, I've been uh, working with partners for over 35 years. I'm one of the key leaders in the partners movement and the partner betrayal trauma movement. And I love partners. I've written more for you than any single human being on the planet. Okay, and, and, and you can, that's verifiable. So I want you to heal. Now, please subscribe if you haven't and invite the other ladies to do the same. If you have a question about step one, uh, which you might, please send that. Now I'm gonna walk through some of the key words in step one because in our Facebook group, sometimes I find ladies really struggle and we get the same questions again and again and again and again and again. And it tells me that they haven't started step one. And so I'm doing this uh, so that partners can actually just hear the heart of what step one would sound like and what someone sounds like who's not doing step one so that you can know who you are. And if you haven't started a step workbook, please get them and start them. Now, if you're not in a group, get in one of our phone groups or find a group locally or start a group. Be a solution for partners. There's millions of you all around the world. And all you need to do is be able to read and to love women and you can start a group. So here it is, we. Now that's the most important word in all of the 12 steps because it never says I, it always says we. We acknowledges that there are many women who have struggled as partners of sex addicts and intimacy anorexics. Millions and millions of you, okay? But we're not going to heal by ourselves, okay? We're going to heal inside a community of women that we can trust, that we can begin to trust again, that we can open our hearts to, open our pain to, open our joys to, and share the journey with. So if you're not making phone calls, you're not doing we. If you're not in a group, you're not doing we. And you'll be one of those ladies who's constantly asking, you know, for some kind of uh, advice about some specific question because you don't have anyone else to ask. You should be asking those in your support groups, uh, your sponsor, and have a we, okay? If you don't have a we, you're gonna be alone and that's not recovery, okay? That's you doing your own healing and trying to be private and maybe you have too much pride to talk about this with anybody but there's millions of ladies who could be a part of your journey. And so find a way to make a we. Admit it. Admit it's hard because you gotta acknowledge something. And I hear what we're acknowledging is the next word. Admit it that we're powerless over our addict or anorexic. Now powerless is probably one of the most significant words in all of the steps. It says, that I don't have any power, like jobless is without a job. You know, um, moneyless would be without money. Weightless would be with no weight, okay? And powerless is I have no power. I have no power to change my addict. I have no power to change my intimacy anorexic. If I'm married to an intimacy anorexic, I cannot make him love me. No matter what I do, no matter what I try, it's not within my power 
to make him love me, to stop his busy, his blaming, his criticism, his withholding love, his withholding sex, his issues in general. I can't stop any of his anorexic strategies. And if I'm married to an addict, I can't stop his porn, his cheating, his lying, his immaturity. I can't stop any of it. I can't control it. I can't manage it. I can't, I can't make the outcome different. Powerlessness says, I cannot create the outcome even though I really wish to. And as a mom, if you've been a mother, you know this with your children. You're powerless over them. And no mom wants to admit that, that you can't control their destiny, you can't control their choices, whether they drink or smoke or do drugs or do sex or do porn or do whatever, because the human will is a free will. And it's a painful, beautiful thing, but we're all powerless over other people, all people. I'm powerless over my clients. I'm powerless over my children, my wife. I'm, I'm powerless over people who like me or don't like me. I'm powerless in life. Now, I can decide how I respond, but I can't decide for other people. Even if I love them with all my heart, all my soul, all my body, even if I'm economically dependent on them, even if I don't want to face my fears, maybe I don't want to work, maybe I don't want to grow up in an area, maybe I don't want to move, maybe I don't want to be divorced. But none of those things makes me powerful to make someone else different. Now, when you believe you're powerful, you're going to micromanage like crazy. You're going to set up all kinds of things and strategies to make sure that he doesn't do what he's not supposed to do. Or he's, you're, he's going to do what he's supposed to do. Or you're going to find people to blame. You're going to, his therapist isn't tough enough. His group isn't hard enough. He, his workbook isn't good enough. He, there's some, some factor outside of him that if I can control or get him to the right place, he will then change. Now, maybe he wants to change and maybe he just doesn't want to change. And accepting he doesn't want to change is powerless. Accepting where he is, who he is, is powerless. You know, if, if, if he's an addict and you, you know, you're going you're gonna to do all the, the blocking and the monitoring and the, and the cajoling and the screaming and the yelling and make sure he never forgets what he's done to you, okay. You believe that your anger, or you're withholding sex, or you're controlling, or you're um, wanting to know every single thought and thing he does, is somehow going to guarantee you the outcome. Now, those are the women who think they're powerful, and you're hurting your own life. You're using your life uh, to try to manage something you can't manage. And you are powerless. And I can tell with the ladies on their Facebook groups, and are in clients who they really believe they're powerful. They believe, well, if I have sex or I don't have sex, if I, if I do this, if I don't do that, if I get this surgery, don't get the surgery, I can control him. You are powerless. I am powerless. I have ladies who are gonna send their husbands to the great Dr. Doug Weiss, okay? And, and they believe I'm gonna be powerful enough to change their husband. Now we've seen thousands of men's lives change. And we do see miracles all the time, but I don't make those happen. They have to want to change. There has to be something inside of them that makes them want to change. And then we can get the skills and equip and do what we need to do to help them become free and well and whole, whether they're anorexics or addicts or both. But as a wife, as a partner, you are powerless. You have zero power to make change for them. Now you can change yourself, you can work on yourself, you can do your own healing, you can you know, work on your trauma, you can do what you can do, you can have boundaries, you can set boundaries, you can mature in areas that you're scared of, okay? You might have to contemplate separation or divorce that you don't want to. Your kids are gonna be hurt no matter what happens unless he's really all in in recovery and you going into a place of believing that you're powerful is not gonna make him love you or your family enough to heal. And it's really hard to accept that you're powerless. And, and the last part of the step is that, that we admit that our lives have become unmanageable. Now, this is definitely an indication between a powerful woman and a powerless woman. A powerful woman believes she can keep doing and trying and send them to this therapist and do this thing and do that and do this. And she keeps on this treadmill of putting her energy to make him better because she believes she's powerful. And in her life, honestly, a lot of these ladies are very strong women. They, they, they can um, 
overcome things in their own lives. They can move mountains, they can start companies, they can, they can do all kinds of things. They're powerful in their own lives. But that doesn't give you power in all of life. It doesn't give you power over people you love. So the, the, the woman who believes she's powerful keeps on this you know, energy and her life becomes kind of obsessed about him and what he's doing and what he's thinking and where he is and, and how's it going for him and him, him, him. And you're actually losing your own life. The powerless woman accepts that she has nothing to do with his addiction, nothing to do with his anorexia. She did not cause it. She cannot cure it. It's good if he does it. It's sad if he doesn't. I accept if he doesn't. I have a plan if he doesn't. But I am not going to spend my life babysitting an adult man. Now she's powerless. She's accepted. This is my life. I may not like it. I may not like that he's an addict or that he's cheated or that he's an anorexic. Matter of fact, I don't like it. But I am not able to change it. I accept in the deepest part of my heart that it's 100% up to him to heal. And no matter what books I buy him, if he doesn't read them, they're not going to change his life. No matter what therapist I take him to, if he doesn't want to change, he's not going to. I mean, you could take him to Jesus. And if they don't want to change, they're not going to change. Okay. You can take them to anybody you think, all right, who can help. But if he doesn't want help, it doesn't help. So the powerless woman is more focused on her recovery, what she needs to do, her workbooks, her steps, her phone calls and her stuff. And, you know, is aware of what he's doing. And if it's adequate or not adequate, then she has to make some harder decisions. But she's not afraid of the decisions. And she doesn't make him try to be her hero. A lot of the women who struggle with wanting to be powerful are trying to make the man the hero for them, as opposed to being your own hero. I'm an advocate for women. Women are powerful. Uh, they are amazing. I've seen women go through hell and come out strong, warrior type, women who are capable, more capable than they thought. Okay, I've seen women go through their fears. I've seen women go from poverty to wealth on their own without needing a man to help them. I've seen women do amazing things. I believe in the power of woman who takes charge of her own life. This step is the first step in recovery because it puts you in reality. See, when you're not in reality, you can't heal. Okay, when you believe a lie, the results are true. If you believe a lie that you can heal him, that your love's gonna change him, that somehow your magic is gonna make it happen, you're believing a lie. So you can't get well, and you can't get sober, and you can't go to step two, okay? Because you're kind of playing God. And that's another, another step. But in being powerless, you are now in reality. This hurts, I have experienced trauma, I don't like the car accident. I don't like the bullets. I don't like the tragedy. I don't like the pain in my family. However, I can't change him. I accept responsibility for what I need to do. And I accept no responsibility for what he needs to do. I can be aware of what he's supposed to do. And I can assess that. And if my assessment shows that he's unwilling to do the work, I need to accept that I'm accepting him as he is not willing to heal, or I'm not accepting that. But you're powerless on what he decides to do. Now, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. And if you're in any kind of recovery groups that are for partners, please share this with them. Because so many women struggle by not doing step one. And if you haven't worked through any of the workbooks that we have, do. Do all 20 plus pages, do the work, share it with a sponsor or another lady in your group and start seeing the, the, the power of doing steps so that you can rapidly heal that you can do. And if you can accept your powerless, that'd be awesome. Also, ladies have questions. <laughs> and I think that's why they put that box right under there so that you could ask me questions and I really do respond to them as quickly as possible. I care about you, I have cared about you for over three decades, and I want you to heal, but you're responsible to do that.